you, when you make hires, it's not just the interview. It's not just the pay plan. It's not how you, it's not just how you recruit. It's how you onboard and how you truly develop these people so that they accomplish what they need to accomplish. If you will do that, you know, and Zig Ziglar said it before, right? You help people get what they want. You get everything that you want. I'm a firm believer in that. If I take their goals and I look at the agency goals, chances are those things intersect and everybody's good. All right, welcome to the Insurance Agents Think Tank Show. I'm your host, Todd McLean, and this podcast is all about how to build and scale your agency. Today's topic is all about hiring. That's a big topic. It's a hot topic right now, especially with agents trying to scale after this last year and a lot of changes going on in the industry. So there's a lot about this topic, especially, you know, back in the day when I started I would just like throw up an ad on Craigslist because I thought I needed to hire somebody. And I didn't really go through all the befores and afters about you know, the consequences of not thinking through hiring somebody. And I noticed as a new agent, I was churning staff left and right. And so I, I think this podcast is really important to have somebody like Craig Wiggins, who is our guest, um, you know, an expert in all things hiring and scaling agency. So Craig, thank you so much for being on the program. Absolutely. Yeah, and if you want, um, so if you want to check out this podcast and see all of our other podcasts, just go to www.agentsthinktank.com, and you can see all the episodes and download all the episodes. So again, thanks again, uh, Craig. Now, can you tell the audience um, for people who might not know you, tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Well, hey, thanks. First of all, appreciate the invite. Appreciate being getting the opportunity to come on the podcast with you. Um, I've started in the insurance business about 25 years ago, started scratch, uh, really had no clue what I was doing. I, I scored low potential, uh, twice on their, on their entrance exam, had no money, no education, no experience. Um, I went to college, but as soon as I found out that you could leave whenever you wanted and they wouldn't call your mom and your daddy, that, that was pretty much into college for me. So I don't know how I even got into this deal. I don't know how they, they approved me for a contract, but they did. And, you know, I got started and, and um, it didn't take me long to figure out maybe they were right about that assessment. Maybe I was low potential because it was really hard. It, and you're talking about, you know, the struggles that you had. I had all kinds of struggles, especially with people, you know, so. Well, don't it, feel bad because I, I dropped out of college my first semester. So <laughs> <laughs> we did something. Right. It, it took me a little longer. I'm, like, I'm, I'm sitting in class one day and this guy just gets up and leaves. And I'm like, dude, that guy just left. He didn't ask it. He's like, man, this is in high school. You can leave if you want to leave. I'm like, well, it's like 75 degrees outside. And it's, it's, there's good fishing going on. I think, I, I think I'm out of here. So, so I, you know, I struggled along the way, in the, especially in the very beginning uh, with everything, with staffing, with, you know, trying to be a leader. I was a terrible leader. Um, but I started figuring some things out. And, and, and obviously we'll talk about a lot of those things in this, in this podcast, but you know, fast forward to today and, you know, we built a $40 million book and made Hall of Fame last year, won pretty much every award you can win. So we kind of figured out a lot of things through struggle and trial and error and making a bunch of bad, you know, bad decisions and a bunch of dumb mistakes, but definitely have learned from all that, you know, and, and it's turned out to be really, really good. So now I just, I try to help other people, you know, because there's a lot of folks that are going through a lot of the same kinds of things that, that I went through and I'm sure that you went through. And, oh, for sure. You know, forum like this or something else where we can we can share information and, and try to help people um that's that's what i'm trying to do today beautiful and you know for everybody listening he said 40 million and he's captive like that's i mean holy crap good job um you know that's something that we all strive to hit so i'm sure we're going to learn quite a bit so you know on the on the hiring process you know, I guess we should back up to the beginning of what do you do? Uh, like, what what would you say? How do you know when to hire somebody? Because I think too many people just feel like, okay, I got to grow my business, so they like jump into hiring. Let's let's back up to the beginning. When what kind of advice would you give somebody before they actually start the hiring process? Is there is there anything that they should go through mentally um, in that in that regard? Yeah, well, look, you're, you're exactly right. I think most owners, <clears throat> and I was one of them, you find yourself in these situations where you're panicked, right? You know, someone's quit. You find someone's moving. You had to fire them, whatever. And now all of a sudden you got to have somebody. So, oh my God, I got to have somebody. So, you know, what I would say to you, regardless of what your agency size is, how long you've been around, what your plans are, 
always be recruiting, always have people out there that you kind of have like on your bench, so to speak, that, you know, you can go to and, 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 and just constantly keep that, that churning because you never know, you know, when you're going to run into that superstar that, that you'll figure out a way to get them on your team if they're, if they're that good. Um, but you just have people in the back of your mind. So I would say constantly be recruiting. And it doesn't mean that you got to be like placing ads or those kinds of things, but you know, like when you're out and about in your community, you know, and you, and you see somebody doing a really good job and you know, it's a stressful environment. Maybe they're working retail or a restaurant or they're working on the weekends or nights. Don't be afraid, you know, to talk to those people and say, Hey, you know, I, I might have a much better opportunity. I'd love to talk with you, you know, and, and see where that goes. And maybe it works out. Maybe it doesn't, but some of the best hires I've made, that's exactly how we got them. We got one out of a tanning salon one time that she was just doing a, a great job for a customer there while, while my wife was there and said, Hey, this, this girl, you need to talk to her and uh, introduce her to me. And, and we brought her on and she was a rock star for several years before she moved away. Yeah. Um, and then I had another one I still have today that I hired over 10 years ago that was in a photography studio, helping a family with a little crying baby and upgrading all their shots and everything. I'm, I'm listening to what he's doing. I'm like, I would never be able to handle all that stress the way he is. So if he can handle that here doing this, I know he could, he could work for us and, and, and probably have a much better opportunity for himself. So I would say you're exactly right. Always be recruiting, always be looking, always be on the lookout for people that might be a good fit and don't get yourself in a position where now you're panicked and you feel rushed and then you end up making a bad hire as a result. Yeah, we get caught up in the day-to-day -day grind of insurance. I mean, we're always putting out fires every single second, right? Or trying to sell something to somebody. So I have, I have found as well that uh, I'll catch myself not recruiting, right? Because I'm so busy and caught up. And a lot of agents, especially me when I started, it was like I wasn't even paying attention to people like I should have been because if you really want to scale your agency to somebody like the size of Craig, I, I got to start paying attention to everybody around me, listening to those people at the photo um, photography studio, listening to Starbucks people, listening, right? We want to start thinking about recruiting, giving them your card, trying to get their card if you're, a, if, you know, if they have one. So I agree. I think um, I think it's a really big deal to always be recruiting and. Then you can also like um, I've I've been to meet and greets before or like open houses or if I find another insurance agent producer um, and they're doing something and they're out and about they're really active they're on Facebook marketing uh, I'm gonna introduce them you know introduce myself to them uh, because at some point you know this is a really competitive industry I might send them an offer like if I can tell that they're a rock star. I might send them a huge base offer, a nice split offer. So, I mean, yeah, if, if we're always recruiting and thinking about it, then your air's not on fire trying to hire. So is there any other things before um, you go to that interview process, people should actually try to figure out on that, on, on who they're hiring and why they're hiring it for? Well, look, I think the first thing is if you're truly trying to grow, the key to growth in this business is duplicating yourself right you, you've got to you've got to go out there and duplicate duplicate what you're doing now and that's a never-ending process to be honest with you because you're constantly specializing and evaluating what people are doing and if, if someone's doing you know a volume of work at, that could be done at a lower pay grade and there's enough of that work to go higher at that lower pay grade then you need to go hire that person right so i think a lot of this is just getting in, in your head they look at, you know, maybe, maybe you don't have an immediate need right now. Maybe you do have maybe somewhat of an immediate need, but be, always be thinking about, you know, what is my organizational chart going to look like five years from now, 10 years from now? What would the ideal agency for yourself look like? If you just have two people right now, you know, how would that, what would the branches look like? You'd have yourself, maybe a sales manager, an operations manager, service team, admin assistants, whatever. Create that chart in, on paper not just in your mind, but on paper and think about, you know, what would I like this to look like down the road? And then just start hiring for the most important positions that need to be filled on that organizational chart. If you do it the right way, there, there's, they're going to come a time where they're paying for themselves and then you can hire the next person and then the next person and the next person. And that, that's how you scale. Most agencies, you know, they get to three or $4 million. They're afraid to hire any more people. They're afraid to delegate. They still want to be in the day to day. They still want to sell and service. Oh, I can't, I can't let this person handle that because they're not going to do it as good as me. And before you know it, they've been a three or $4 million agency for 10 or 15 or 20 years and they never grew any because they were scared 
you know, to take that extra step. So I think the first thing is just kind of get in your mind, what is this going to look like five, 10 years down the road and start preparing for that, knowing that it's not going to be perfect and it's not going to look exactly like that. But if you're making progress in that direction, that's a whole lot better than just treading water, being stuck in a place where you, where you can't grow. So I think that's the first thing. And then of course, and we can talk about it, is getting your getting your mind around what the process is actually like for sure and why you do certain things along the way yeah i think a high level uh in, in processes before i hire someone at a high level i first you know because if somebody let's say we're going to hire a, a salesperson producer um a lot of people will will put an ad out they, they think they have a sales problem which they probably do if they need to hire a salesperson uh, but what they'll do is they'll just throw out an ad and start interviewing um, before they think through, okay, when I hire them, what is the consequences? I got to, am I going to provide them marketing? Are they going to market themselves? Like they, they, or even a service person, do you even have the service needs or do you feel just a little bit overwhelmed? And when you hire a full-time person, maybe they have two hours worth of work. So, um, you know, establishing that base, of what are they going to do and what resources do you have for them and the workload that they're going to take on, I think is a pretty important process before you hire. Because uh, that will also, too, correct me if I'm wrong, help you think about the interview process. So think about the type of person that you need in that role based on things like your customer base, your processes when you onboard. Um, you know, if you have your service person doing more of the onboarding or if you have your producer doing more onboarding, like, there's certain types of personality traits that you should probably think about too when you're doing that interview process, right? Absolutely, man. And look, you know, I fully believe in a specialized environment. You know, when I first started for several years, we were like, everybody's trying to do everything. Yeah. We're trying to sell, we're trying to service, you know, everything. Everyone's a hybrid. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, I know there's agencies that they, they, they're doing that because they feel like they need to do it. The sooner you can specialize, and start putting people in positions where they can really flourish with what they're good at. I'm telling you, the better off you're going to be. 100%. Most people, it's it's rare to find somebody who's going to be an outstanding asset to your organization on the sales side and on the service side. They're usually it's like playing offense and defense. It's like playing quarterback and linebacker. You, usually, that's going to be two totally different positions right. um, to, to fill. So you got you got to start thinking about those kinds of things. So so you're exactly right when you're thinking about this person. First of all, do I have a need for this? Do, do I have the support that I can give them when they come on where they're going to be successful, right? And then you got to start building that out, not just in your mind, but in a job description, not from just a results perspective. Like a lot of people, they focus so much on results right. with say, you got to focus on what it takes to get there and, and talk about the expectations and the standards in terms of the activity that's required for them to be successful. So you start in the interview and we can go through that as well. Those are the things that you're discussing because you're trying to, you're trying to like peel back the layers of the onion and figure out who you're really dealing with. Most people in the interview, that's, that's the best version of them you're ever going to see. Right. And yeah. it's up to you as the owner to drill down and figure out who is this I'm really dealing with. I would rather fire them during the interview than six months later when I figure out they're not going to work out. Right. So the more we can do up front, to first identify what it is they're going to be expected to do and be specific about that from a daily activity perspective. And then we communicate that now in that interview, once we've gotten past the personality and, you know, back when I did, it was like, Hey, can you fog this mirror? If you can fog this mirror I'll, and you get a license, I'll, I'll bring you on. You now, got <laughs> we got to change. That's exactly right. If they, if they were like alive, we'd give them a shot. Uh -huh. We'd just throw them in the, deep in the pool and hope that they could swim. But now you have to really, drill down and figure out is does this person have what it takes and a lot of times it's just simply asking them questions about what you're going to expect them to do and getting their feedback on that and just how, how, did, how does it make you feel knowing they've got to do x and a lot of times you'll, you'll get body language you'll get responses from them that will help you figure out whether this is a good fit or not and the minute you know once you go through that if you feel like hey in your gut this person is not going to work out then they're probably not going to work out because again that's the best version you've seen so i think you're exactly right you got to have the support. You got to build that job description out. And again, not just in a general sense or even in right. a results perspective, but what are they going to do every day and really drill down to that with the standards and expectations that you're going to acquire and talk about that and see how they respond. What about uh, a new salesperson? So let's say, or I'm sorry, a new agent. 
So I'm a new agent. I don't really know expectations, what to expect, what positions do what in the office. So, I mean, thank goodness for, for uh, companies like yours, Craig Wiggins Coaching, where you, you guys have a lot of coaching and mentoring and help in that aspect. But, you know, is there is there a way that you, what, what kind of advice would you give a brand new agent who's trying to scale their agency? They have a ton of unknowns, a lot of fear. Um, what, what kind of advice would you give somebody like that? Because they don't know what, what before is. I don't. I don't. And that's a, it's a good question. And, it's, and what, I, what I always try to do is try to back into the numbers. Okay. So and if you're a new agent listening to this or watching this and you kind of know what your close rate is, right? You, you should know even after you've only been here for a couple of months, you know what your close rate is. You, got, you should have an idea of that. If you don't, that's another conversation that we right. need to have. You got to know what your close rate is. Once you know that, then you can back into everything. So if you think about, okay, this person's close rate is 20%, you can take your average premium. You can take the comp plan that you have and you can calculate what is it going to take for this person to make a living, to make the, what they're needing to make, and for them to provide value where they're paying for themselves in your agency, right? Once you know that, then, okay, how many quotes does that require? How many quotes do they have to do every day to get to that point? Do I have enough marketing in place to make that happen? Are they going to have to do some on their own? Is it going to be a combination? What, what, what's going on there? Then you can back into that, the number of contacts. So you can probably get a pretty good idea in your mind about what it is they're gonna to have to do when they come in from day one, in terms of the number of people they gotta to talk to every day to generate the number of quotes, to generate the sales that you're looking for, and you can start there. And it's really important that you go through that with them. And you don't just say, I need right. you to come in and write X dollars of premium a month, because they don't know what that, especially if they're new to the business, they don't know what that means. They don't know what a lot is. They know what a phone call is though. They know what it takes to make a phone call. So if you run all those numbers, you're like, man, you got to make 150 phone calls a day to be successful in this. And you get any kind of pushback at all. Oh, that's a lot of phone calls. In eight hours, I got to make 150. Well, then that person's probably not going to work out, right. right? But if you're like, oh, I do that all day long anyways, and the job I have now, or I, you know, I feel if, if they have, you know, good, if there's a good vibe there. Okay, now let's talk about the quotes. Let's talk how many quotes you're going to have to do every day. Maybe it comes out to eight or nine quotes a day. You're going to have to take those 150 phone calls you have to generate eight or nine quotes a day. You know, how does that make you feel? And then you start talking about that. And right. those are the kind of conversations you should have to figure out, is this, is this person even capable? Or are they going to be willing to do what you're expecting them to do? Because that's what, but when I look back on the people that failed, you know, it was my fault because I didn't take them through that process. And a lot of them just had call reluctancy. They wouldn't pick up the phone. They were scared to pick up the phone. And you go in there at noon, you're like, dude, you've made, you know, eight phone calls. What's going on? Well, I got to do this. And, and you got all these excuses and then you find out they're just not cut out for it, you know? So that's the very basics. When, when you're new and you're trying to figure out, you know, how do I bring somebody on back into those numbers of what's really going to, what it's going to take for them to be successful, not just for themselves, but also for you. And then run, when you run all those numbers out, communicate that to them and see how they feel. hundred percent. Yeah. There's, you know, something that really kind of, uh, opened my eyes when I was hiring producers back in the day. And I'll never forget my unicorn producer that I, that I ran into finally, like five years into my career. The difference was, is that they, they started acting like it was a partnership. They would come and tell me uh, why they weren't hitting their goals. We would work together on solving what tools or scripting they needed. They were actually involved and wanted to be successful versus, sitting in the corner and you're wondering what they're doing, right? So it, it definitely has to be a partnership with that kind of high production, high activity um, goal. So yeah, if you don't have somebody that's, uh, that shows any kind of call reluctance or feels timid about things, uh, they're probably not going to be a good producer in this industry. No. And, and, and let's take that conversation one step further. And, yeah. and I kind of like when you said that because, you know, we, we just encountered this, last week, these two chairs right here behind me. I got a hiring manager here and a candidate that he brought in. And this is a mistake I made for years. That is probably one of the biggest tips that I can give you is you're trying to build, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to build a quality team where the culture's right, people are successful, everybody works together, all those kind of things, right? This, was, this is the step that I missed for a long time. When I finally kind of started figuring it out, it's been so impactful. So. You go through, and we're kind of skipping ahead, but you said it, so I want to I like, touch on it. You go through that interview, 
you figured out this is a good candidate. This is someone you want to make an offer to, right? You've, you've had all that conversation. You know they're going to be, you feel like they're going to be a good fit. You're about to get to the comp plan. Before you get to the comp plan, you need to ask this question to them. You need to say, look, I think you, I think you might be a fantastic fit for organization. Tell me, you know, I'm talking to you, Todd. Tell me, Todd, what specifically do you want to do with your money? What are your specific financial goals? And most people are going to say, well, I just want to provide for my family or I want to make as much as I can or this or that. And I'm like, no, like specifically, like, what do you, what do you want to accomplish? And yeah, yeah. I, asked this, I asked this question to this lady last week, right? And Tyler's sitting here with me. And um, I asked her that and she, and she, at first she was kind of taken back. She was like, what do you mean? And I, I said, I'm like, I want to know. I want to know what it's going to, what do you want to do? And she tells me that she's in an apartment and she's got two kids, a two bedroom apartment, and it gets dark here about 5.30. So she's like, every day when I go home, we, we kind of live in a bad neighborhood. I won't let them go outside and play unless I'm home. By the time I get home, it's dark. So I want to buy a house. I want to get out of the apartment. I want to buy a house. I'm like, you know what? We can make that happen. Tyler's going to work with you. We're going to look at the comp plan. We're going to figure out, not just from a production perspective, but what it's going to take every day for you to make that happen. And we're going to hold you accountable. And we're going to work with you and be your accountability partner to make sure that you accomplish that goal. Love because it. it's important to me, and this is the important part, you need to say this, guys. It's important to me that you accomplish what you want to accomplish. If I help you accomplish what you're looking to accomplish, chances are the agency's gonna get everything that we need. And you, and when I started going through that, and we got to the comp plan, she started crying. And I stopped and I was like, her name was Tam, like, Tina, what's wrong? And she says, you know what, I've worked, she's about 35 years old. She said, I've, I've had eight jobs. Nobody has ever said anything like that to me. Nobody's ever told me that they cared about me as a person. And it made such an impact on her, right? Love and it. this is the key. This is somebody we just met. So if you've got people on your team, this kind of goes in a little different direction, but if you've got people on your team now that you haven't had that conversation with, you need to go through that process. Once they know you care, once they know that you're in that partnership with them, trying to help them accomplish what they're trying to accomplish, it changes everything. And when you're interviewing, Think about these people, man. They got options that you're not the only one talking to them. They've got options and you have difficult problems sometimes to overcome with licensing and everything else. So you're, you're kind of at a disadvantage by skipping that step. You could lose somebody to a competitor, to another industry that may not be anywhere near as good of the opportunity that you have, but you didn't say what you needed to say. And when, when we said that to her, she's in, man, she's yeah. bought in, she's ready to go. And, I, and hopefully she comes on and, and she's going through a license process now and hopefully she's, she's great. So I would encourage you to make that a part of your hiring process is have that conversation and it, don't do it too early. You don't want to do it. Obviously if people sure. are not going to offer you, but right before you get to the comp plan, because that's going to be the part that they're really going to put a lot of thought into and look at the salary commission, whatever it is that you've got set up, they need to know this part. Then once you have all that, the biggest problem people have, most owners have, is holding people accountable. They hire these folks. How do I hold them accountable? They don't like to hold them accountable because it's a confrontation. Right. Right. When you, when you make it about them and they've given you their goals and you work together to come up with what they need to do to make that happen, now if they get off track, all I got to do is go back to her and talk to her about that house. Right. Not the agency, not me, not our goals. Like, team. How are you going to get, how are you going to get out of that apartment if you don't do what we talked about the other day? Right? I love I'm it. holding accountable to it. So it just goes, it goes with everything that we're talking about now. When you, when you make hires, it's not just the interview. It's not just, you know, the pay plan. It's not how you, it's not just how you recruit. It's how you onboard and how you truly develop these people so that they accomplish what they need to accomplish. If you will do that, you know, and Zig Ziglar said it before, right? You help people get what they want. You get everything that you want. I'm a firm believer in that. If I take their goals and I look at the agency goals, chances are those things intersect and everybody's good. If I focus just on the agency side and I don't show them that I care, do you think they're really going to go that extra mile? Do you think they're Definitely always maybe not. looking for another job? Do you think there's this revolving door? So that's probably the biggest tip I can give you as you go into this process to not only get good hires, you know, but to make sure that when they come on, they, they do what they need to do to help you grow. That's an amazing tip. I love it. Um, I'm going to go back and just use that on my own agency by the end of this week. So I love that. that that's awesome. Now, what happens? Okay, so let's back up. Um, let's say, okay, I figured out the type of person I need. I figured out what their roles, responsibilities, figured out how many to support them with marketing, 
or make sure that I have processes in place, like if you have a service person, where do you go to find these people if you haven't been recruiting all along? There, I know there's all sorts of different platforms out there, people out there, programs you can use, but let's, let's, let's go through a couple of those. Like, where would you say has been the best source of um, new hires other than people that you've met day to day? Okay, there's, there's several. Um, first, if you have a current staff, okay, if you have people, people run with people that are, that are like themselves, right? right? Make sure you have a bonus in place for your staff. You have so many owners out there, so many businesses that pay a recruiting company, right? And they'll pay them two, three thousand dollars a person. Why don't you just offer up a thousand dollar bonus to your staff 100%. and say, hey, you know somebody that you like, that you work, that you feel like you would work well together? Bring them in here. If I hire them, I'll give you a thousand bucks, right? So that's that's like the easiest place. And they'll get motivated about that. And we've made a bunch of hires that way through the years. That's the first place. The second, use all the free stuff available to you. Facebook is free. Okay. Post on Facebook. Create a video. Just get your phone out. Just get your phone out and walk walk into your office. Do a little video. Show them where they're going to sit. Maybe interview somebody else on your team. If you don't have anybody on your team, just do real quick hey, what, what it's all about. Make it very personable. Don't be afraid. Don't worry about what it's going to look like. It's a good tool because videos are going to show up in the algorithm of Facebook more than anything else that you do. So do a quick video. You know, tag people in it. Offer a referral bonus. So you say, look, if you know somebody that's looking, and, and you can say you can say it in a way where it doesn't really direct it towards them, but they could be thinking it. If you know somebody's looking, you know, refer them to me, and I'll give you a thousand dollars. And yes, you can refer yourself if you want to, right? Yeah. Get that on Facebook. Ask people to share that. We've got a couple of videos that have you know, 10,000 views on them. They've been shared all over the place. And we've made several hires, made, made a couple of hires that are realtors. One that was a mortgage officer. They're, they're, they're on Facebook. Maybe they're not looking for a job. They're not an indeed. Their resume is not posted anywhere, but they see that video and they respond. Okay. So that, that's an easy way. Just, just leveraging the power of Facebook, LinkedIn, you can do the same thing. Get that content out there. Also, indeed, a lot of people use indeed. You know, we set it up with the resume search alerts. So when keywords are posted within someone's resume, it pops the resume to us, right? We get notified. Here's a little tip for you with Indeed though. Instead of just sending out the template, you know, where you can communicate right. through the platform, right? Or through email. Again, grab your phone and do a little quick video. You know, hey Todd, I saw your resume on Indeed. I think you might be a fantastic fit for our organization. Give me a call when you get a chance. Put your phone number. Send that video to them as a message on Facebook. Try to friend, friend them first so that it goes to their regular inbox, not their other inbox. But that will you will stand out. You will look different than all the other people that are out there trying to recruit that same person. So, so you can use Facebook. And then of course, you know you've got all, all these hiring companies. I love Team Hire. Team Hire does a great job getting candidates. We've used them several times. They they started off doing group interviews. Now they do Zoom interviews because of COVID. It's a great way to shorten your timeline and get candidates in front of you really, really quick, you know, to, to make those hires when you, when you need them now, you know, so there's a lot of ways to just be creative, you know, and, and be different than everybody else. Cause you guys, you gotta remember these people, especially if they're looking, they got all kinds of options, right? They got options for places that don't require a license, that don't require bonding authority, that don't require all the things that we require that they can go start at tomorrow. Or you may be competing with somebody that is a full salary, not commission or salary plus commission. And maybe they don't look at your opportunity near as good as, as what that is, even though yours might be better. So your messaging, the way you come across, the excitement, the energy that you have, you know, all those things matter if you're trying to get these people in front of you. That's your goal when you're recruiting is just trying to get people in front of you, right? It's not to make a hire. It's like, it's like when you're selling, you got to get somebody to quote first before you can sell. So we're, we're trying to get a candidate that we can talk to, to interview, to, to pre-screen, to interview. We pre do a pre-screen on the phone, but we need those people. So the more you can do to, to create that conversation, the better off you're going to be. So just be very creative about it. Think outside the box, you know, push the envelope of some of these things and, um, and, and drive the odds in your favor. Absolutely. And I've, I've actually seen because when I'm posting on indeed, or if I'm, you know, I used to post on Craigslist, I haven't done it recently. Uh, something that I've noticed on indeed on, cause I'll go look through entrance agents, job postings to see what, how they're recruiting and, and their postings. Guys, don't be boring. Like I've seen so many horrible job postings about just uh, no. I, I would not want to work for you if I read that job posting, right? It's like going to work at a bank and dying, um, which I think a lot of these people. So what I like to do on my job postings, um, if they'll allow it. So sometimes the algorithm will will block your like job posting. 
I, I, the best job posting ad that I've ever posted, the very first word in the subject line was unicorn. Like just, just trying to get something unique and different out there. Um, I was looking for my unicorn. And, and so be a little different um, than everybody else that's, that's also- It's a pattern interrupt, right? It's just like on Facebook. Yep. You see these ads on Facebook all the time where there's a video or a picture that has nothing to do with the company that's actually advertising with their advertising. Right. It's designed to get your attention, yep. to interrupt the pattern, right? It's the same thing. So, you know, you got to be professional. You don't want to be like a clown on there, right. but you need to do things that certainly help you stand out because you, you have massive competition. You have so many things that where these people have options. People love to, they love to bang on millennials all the time. Millennials are not bad people. They, they have options and they are, they are willing to exercise those options. So you as an owner, you know, you got to understand that and you, and you got to play in that world. Now, obviously it's, it's a two way street and you're not going to like succumb to everything they want or anything like that, but you got to understand what you're dealing with. And when you have that dynamic out there, especially with everything going on today and the people that are on unemployment and all the other issues that, oh, you know, yeah. that we face the challenges, you, you can't just go about this like you did even three or four years ago. You got to be different. Absolutely. So in, Let's talk about the interview process, because I think there's, um, you know, you talked about the, the mortgage or getting somebody a house. And what kind of questions or content can you give around like that interview process? Because you've, you've put out the job posting. Now they're showing up like what, what kind of uh, or maybe I should say that, yeah, the interview process and questions. Can you give us some insights there on what you do? Well, the, the first thing that we do is we have a short pre-screen on the phone, okay? Because remember, these people, they're going to be on the phone 99% of the time, right? So we want to talk to them on the phone just really quick. Not We don't want to do an interview on the phone because it's important that we judge their body language, you know, either on Zoom or face-to-face, -face, right? Right. So the phone interview is just like, hey, can this person talk on the phone? Can they, can they have a conversation or not? If you can tell in the first 20 seconds that this is not going to, then, you know, we've had, have a nice day. You know, we're, we're, yeah. we're done. But if you feel like, hey, they got a phone voice, you know, they can, they can conduct on the conduct business on the phone. Then you want to set up your interview to get them in there or do a Zoom, whatever, just where you can be face to face in some format. And and then that process is all about, like I said, you're peeling back the layers of the onion. What we do here, where we really spend some time, you know, our our whole process, our whole system, we're captive, right? So we don't have all these options. We really have to sell on value. We have to get around the price conversation. We have to really leverage coverage, relationships, advice, those types of things. So we're going to ask them questions about their current insurance. We're going to ask them about their liability limits. We're going to take them through kind of the same sales process we would use on a customer and see how they respond to that. And if we go through that kind of in a passive way and we can tell they're just not buying into that or it didn't send off any alarms when they have, you know, 25, 50 limits and they really need a lot more. If I can tell when we go through that, that this is going to be like trying to put a square peg into a round hole to teach them this. Not that they have to fully understand it, but if they're not even grasping that, wait a minute, maybe this is something I should address. How do you think I'm ever going to be able to teach them to talk to customers like that? That's right? a big deal. So it is. So, so that, that's really like the, that's the, because look, a lot of times when I, when I first started interviewing, it's just like, hey, Todd, you know, Tell me about yourself, right? And you let them talk and they talk, or whatever. Oh, he's got a pretty good personality. I think he'll work out, you know? And there was like, there's nothing there. Well, you, when, you, when you get them in, why do they fail? What happens? They either won't pick up the phone or they're not buying into what you're selling. They're not buying into what you're going to teach them to do, right? Yep. So let's, let's deal with that now. Let's talk. Let's not wait till Monday when they come in. Let's deal with it now. Let's just do it in a way where we can kind of tell. Maybe you won't tell 100%. But you, when you go through that conversation, if I ask you, Ted, talk to me about your liability limits. Well, I don't really know what they are. But we, and we find out. We look together. We figure it out. And I explain it to you. And you're like, well, you know, and you don't, and you don't think it's that big a deal. And then I explain exactly what would happen if you got into an, into an accident and you maintain those limits. And you're still not grasping what I'm trying to teach you. That's the exact problem I'm going to have when I bring you on. And now I'm having to fight that battle on top of everything else that we got to deal with, that's not going to work. But if I have that conversation and you're like, wow, nobody's ever said, I, I got, I need to get that fixed. I need to get that changed. And they're, you can tell they're genuine about it. Yeah. And they're looking at that as, you know what, this is, this is a legit problem. Nobody's ever explained this to me before. And they're buying into what I'm saying. Now I know, okay, you know what? 
they're probably going to have the same kind of conversations with the people when we teach them this process. So that's really like the focal point of our interview. Do they have a good phone voice when they come in? You know, can they get that part? Then the next thing, if I feel like, all right, he's got that. Now it's all about standards and expectations and non-negotiables. We haven't really talked about that any, but you got to have non-negotiables too. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. The next thing though is the standards and expectations. You know, here's what, here's what's going to be required. This is what we're going to look for you every day. It's what you've got to do. And you're getting their feedback on all that. You know, here we require 120 phone calls, 10 quotes, at least three items sold, three policies sold every day. And we go through that process of how that works out. And, and, and we set those standards and expectations from day one. We also talk about the goal they have to have their very first week. So the very first week, we require 10 items sold the first week, 10 policies sold that very first week. We're setting the stage. We're, we're having a sense of urgency about getting going, right? So we're talking about a second week, third week, fourth week. We have weekly goals, then goals month two, month three. If they get through the first two weeks, they're going to be fine 99% of the time. But we talk about that up front. Again, instead of just throwing somebody in the deep end of the pool and hoping they work out, let's talk about all the things that they're actually going to have to do to work out and see how they respond to that. Okay, so we go through all that and they're, and they're good. Everything's good. Now we're talking about the non-negotiables. No lying, no cheating, no stealing, no forging, no gossip. Okay, we really talk about those things because look, sometimes those are like givens to us. Right. It's important that you make it clear. You, you, you can't. You can't falsify an application. That's a great way to, to ruin your career and put everybody in jeopardy. We're not, we, we can't do that. We don't allow that. Doesn't matter how long you've been here, what you do, you do that, you're gone. Right. If you gossip about somebody, I don't allow that either. I, again, I don't care how much business you write or what you contribute. You start gossiping about people and you're gone. Because again, we're trying to we're trying to build a culture here. Okay, we're trying we're trying to do it the right way, and we can't have that. And and a lot of times, what will happen? What we've seen happen. When you talk about that in the interview process, it makes you more attractive. Some of these people, that's exactly why they're leaving where they're leaving now, because the culture sucks and it's toxic. And then when you say that, sometimes it's not always money. Sometimes it's the way they're treated and the way things are, are going on in that office. When you talk about that, not only are you setting that expectation for what goes on in your office, now you might be appealing to somebody that's dealing with that somewhere else, right? So we go through the standards, expectations, the non-negotiables, and then that's when we would have that conversation we talked about a few minutes ago about what's important to them before we get to the comp plan. That's really the process that we go down. And along the way, all that feedback back and forth, that's where we can make normally a pretty good determination about whether this person's gonna fit or not. You can go out there and Google all the fancy interview questions. Tell me about a time that you struggled through this. You can do all that if you want to, okay? But remember, these people have probably done their research too. And they've watched a lot of those same videos and they've already got these answers planned. Right. And they know what. Hey, and they, you know, they're going to make it, it. <laughs> that doesn't do you a lot of good, you know, it just doesn't help you. So, so focus again, the goal should be, it's like, this is like their first day. It's Monday morning. They just showed up and now you're walking them through what they're going to have to do. Cause that's usually when you find out, Oh, you made about higher, right? right? Let's do it during the interview. Let's not wait. Let's do it then. And then at the same time, set the tone for everything that's going to be required from day one when it comes to what they actually have to do. Because then if you make a bad hire and you said you got to do 10 items your first week, right? And they don't, and it's Friday and it's, you know, 10 o'clock and they have one item done for the week. It's not going to be any surprise to anybody when they got to go. And now we've only wasted a week of time instead of six weeks of time. So it's really important that you frame all that up. And this is all honestly, Todd, it's just, it's a result of all, every time I've ever made a bad hire, and I always own them. They're always me. It's never, it's not them. It's me because it, I'm the one that made the decision to bring them on. Right. I always look back. What could I have done different? Where could I put into the process? And I'll give you another example. When you're dealing with somebody, especially if they're an older person, just being honest, you sometimes need to judge their computer skills, right? I've made hires. Maybe you have too, yeah. where you come in there and they're like freaked out. They don't know where anything is. And the, I've lost my email and they have like 90 tabs open at the top of their screen. And 60 of them are their email and they can't find any of them and they, and they can't work through your systems and they can't understand your technology. And maybe they're the greatest salesperson in the world. Maybe they can light a room up, but they can't navigate with the, the common things that you know, we got to do every day. So, you know, we've done that. Like, hey, Google the, 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 the nearest sushi restaurant. Write me an email about your favorite movie. You know, things like that where it's like, OK, let's, can this person actually function with technology or not? You'll tell really quick if they're if they're capable or not. Yeah. So. That's the goal for us in the interview 
is to not just figure out do they have a good personality, not just figure out, you know, are they willing to take this job? You know, wow, I, found, I actually found somebody to take my comp plan. No, it's more about can they do what's going to be required on day one while we also set the expectations of what they're going to have to do in order to be successful. And if you do all of that, you're definitely going to tilt the odds in your favor. Yeah, I think my my biggest takeaway there that I've never done, and I just I think it's game changer, and I, so thank you, is selling them or, or going through the value script of what they have, because you're absolutely right. I have one producer who value sells all day long, and I have another producer who might be my rock star, but at the same time, she is not a value salesperson, even as much as I beat it into her. I, I, I should have done that. Um, so I think that's, that's, that's awesome. Like I'm going to add that to our interview process. It's, it's helped us a lot when, when you, when you're evaluating people, because that, that was one of the biggest stumbling blocks for us. We find somebody, bring them on and, and we, they could not grasp that or they just wouldn't buy into it. Man, if you don't believe in this, it's, it's really, it's hard to sell on value if you don't believe it yourself. Yeah, or those people that say, oh, I want, a jo I want this job because I like the idea of protecting people. And then if you take them through that process, you'll be able to see hesitations or things like that when you say, hey, it's $10 more. Uh, I don't know about that, right? Um, so I, I, I think that's awesome. Now, let's talk about accountability after you hire somebody, after you make them the offer. Because I think you're right, a lot of agents, especially myself, hesitate from the confrontation that's going to come up, right? It's so uncomfortable. I'm so busy. I don't want to deal with this crap. What? Um, so, like, for me, I have my new staff on all staff on my agency MVP tracking their daily activity and what they're doing. What, uh, what other than just – would you just recommend tracking activity – and having them read through scripts or what, what's kind of your thought process on day one's hire, what's the management follow-up process look like? Okay, good question. And, and there's, a couple, there's a couple of phases to that, I guess, is that part of that interview, when we make the final offer, is dependent on their licensing, also dependent on them bringing 25 quote sheets on day one, okay? Wow. The purpose of that is twofold. One, can they prospect? If they can't gather 25, because remember, these people, they're going to have to go through the license process, probably take you know, two, three weeks. If you can't get 25 quote sheets from your friends and family in, in a couple of weeks, you're probably never going to be able to work my winbacks or the leads that I give you with strangers for the most part. So I want to see them prospect. Do you have the ability to prospect? Then when they come in, that's what they're going to use that first week to try to get those 10 items, right? We're going to take their prospects, run them through the system. Okay, they're probably going to give them a, a lot more leeway if they make a mistake or if they're a little slow to get back to them, right? So we're going to use their lead, so to speak, to go through that first week. So the first week is really more about production, okay? Yep. We're looking for the 10 items. That's, that's what we're looking for. Once they get off of their leads, now they're done with their 25 quote sheets. They've, they've worked through all that. Then it shifts over to activity. So are they doing the work with the leads that we provide, the leads that are in our system, their own personal network, whatever, are they doing the work required to generate the quotes required to get the production that we're looking for? And that's when the, the, the accountability shifts over. So now it becomes okay. more about what they got to do every day. And that goes back to that initial conversation. So hopefully when they come on, we already have a plan in place to help them get where they want to go. Okay. And that first week, again, it's about using what they have, what they, what they brought to the table. And maybe not the first week, maybe they just go through that in a few days. It just depends on the person, how quality the leads are. But then it's now about, okay, let's go back to that conversation that we had activity wise for you to get that house, to pay off that credit card, whatever it is you're trying to do. And we make it about that. So it's never about what the agency has to do or what I have to do, because look, man, they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> they don't care how much you, make. they don't care how much I make. They don't care how well the agency does on a bonus. What's in it for them? You know, how, how do we drive drive this home to get to their why, right? So we make it all about that. Now, sometimes people will say, well, well, what if you do all that? And they still don't, they still don't do it. Well, then that's when you as an owner, you got to make a decision. Is this person contributing enough for you to keep them around based off what they're doing, where it makes sense for you, knowing that maybe they're not getting to the level that you're looking for, or, or, or do you need to let them go? Yeah. I mean, let, let's say you hire them and 30 days later, ask yourself, would I hire them now? Would I hire them again? If the answer is no, 
then you probably should let go of them. You know, and, and sometimes and sometimes people they have a difficult time with that because they get attached to people and they look at them as people. But man, if someone is not a good fit, they're not a good fit. Exactly. And you're doing them a service by enabling them. You, everybody ought to go read the book called Radical Candor by Kim Scott. Radical okay. Candor by Kim Scott. It will teach you how to hold people accountable and challenge them professionally while you, show, while you show them that you care about them personally. Most people, they fall into a couple other categories. They're like, they're the ones that will tell you, Todd, man, you're a great singer. You should try it for American Idol when you can't sing worth a lick. Because we see them on TV yeah. every, every year, right? Who told those people to get, somebody told those people that they were a good singer. They were not, right? That or maybe they're, they're cool mom. You know, they, they just try to be their friend. Instead of truly challenging them or pushing them, they're the ones buying them beer on Friday night because they don't, they're not old enough. Yeah. Right? We can't do that either. We got to be like, hey, coach, we have, to, we have to challenge them and push them professionally while at the same time show that we care about them while helping them reach their goals. You know, so that's, that's the accountability conversation that we have here. And what we teach, you know, at CWC is when you're working with your team, that's the best way to get through to them. It, you know, and I did it the other way for years. I was a terrible leader. I wasn't even, I was, just, I was a boss. It was a, you know, bang your fist on the desk kind of conversation or it wasn't a good conversation as far as I was concerned. That doesn't work. You just run people off. It's a revolving right. door. You'll never get them to reach your full potential. You got to show them that you care. And part of that is pushing them, you know, to be the best that they can be. I saw that so many times throughout the years, um, especially talking with other agents is I've seen plenty of agents actually make excuses for their staff. Like it didn't make any sense to me why, you know, they couldn't hit their goal because um, X, Y, or Z. And I'm like, okay, well, why do you have to make an excuse for them? That doesn't make any sense. Like, uh, so I, I agree the, you can't enable your staff. And I've also seen way too many agents tell me, oh, you know, I, sh you know, I've been meaning to fire them for like the last year. What? Like, well, it makes no sense. Like, why, why? Just let them go. Well, I'm concerned about taking on too much. Like, I'm going to get overwhelmed. Well, good. Maybe that will motivate your butt to to hire somebody. Quick story. Yeah. When, when I was five million, okay. When I was five million in premium years ago, I had a lady in my organization that was a cancer, and I knew it. Okay. And I thought I could hire my way out of it. I thought I could just hire other people. I can't afford to let this person. Go. She goes, she knows all the customers. She knows all the systems. I can't let her go. And what would happen every time I make a hire, she would infect that hire, right? So we're all sitting in the meeting room one morning and I'm trying, I don't even remember what it was I was trying to implement, but I was trying to implement. So I had this great idea, right? I always had these, all these great yeah. ideas. And maybe, maybe I was wrong, but the way that they reacted to what I was trying to do was t totally unacceptable, right? They, they, it was so, everybody got their arms folded. Everybody looked at the floor. She'd infected that whole group. And I asked him, I'm like, you know, I asked her, her name was Angel. I said, is that, is this, is this how you feel? You know what I mean? Is this, is this where we're, is this where we are? Really? You know, she, she wouldn't say anything. I said, does anybody else disagree? Does anybody else agree with what I'm trying to do? Nobody. I said, you know what? Everybody just get your stuff and get out. And I fired all of them right then Whoa. on the spot, 5 million in premium. And I called my dad who used to be an agent years. I'm like, dad, you still got your license? Cause I, I could use this a little help for a few weeks while I hired some more. <laughs> But man, and I'm not saying that you should go and do, I'm not suggesting anybody did because it was, it was tough for a few months, but honestly, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. When you have somebody in your office that is a cancer, that, because here's the thing, maybe they're not even a cancer. Maybe they're just not a good producer. Maybe they're just not a good employee. Everybody there knows how you're dealing with that. They see the way you're handling that situation yep. and you're either losing respect or you're gaining respect. And, and when they know you're not dealing with it the right way, you're not, maybe you're not even saying anything to them. Not even, you're not even addressing it, right? You're losing, you're losing respect with everybody else on your team and it's causing you problems. 99% of the time when someone, when someone terminates a long-term employee like that, where they're just like hesitant to get rid of them, the rest of the group rises up. And then they come to you and they say all these things. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad that person's gone because this, 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 this. And what happens to production? You just keep your going. It, you don't miss yeah. it. Most of the time. So once you know, your gut got you where, do you, where you are, okay? Whether you're brand new, you've been here for 30 years. Your gut got you where you are. Your intuition is important. When you know, you know deep down they shouldn't be there anymore. You got to get rid of them, man. You get, so, so that accountability portion and, wh and what you're talking about, making excuses for them. You know, I've heard people say, well, they've only been here for six months, you know? 
They've only been here for 90, 90 days. You can't get them up to speed in 90 days. If you can't get them up to speed in 90 days, there's a problem with your onboarding process. Yeah. We've had people hit 100 in their first month. So, so don't tell me you can't get to 20, 30, 40 policies a month in 90 days. If you can't, you need to go back and look and see what happened. Why? Yep. I mean, it's 20 business days in most months. You, you tell me you can't write two items a day in eight hours and two I mean, come on. So yeah, people make excuses. And what I would encourage you to do, instead of making excuses for what's going on, to have some self-reflection. What could I have done different to get them where they truly need to be? And, and how can I implement that going forward with my future hires? And if you'll do that and be honest with yourself, you'll grow as a leader, you'll grow, you'll grow your agency and, and things will go in a totally different direction. Yeah. And I've seen people, you know, when they make that hire, a couple of things, um, you know, so they might set up goals, like you need to hit 120 calls, 10 quotes, you know, they, they have those goals in place. And then I've heard plenty of times an excuse of, you know, I didn't invest enough money or I, I don't have enough money to invest in like resources or tools for them to use to hit those goals. And so that's kind of like you, if you step back and hopefully a lot of people who, um, you know, I've had people who say they want them to make 200 phone calls and they're not going to give them a dialer or something to allow that kind of mass communication or activity that needs to happen. Um, so you got to really reflect and look back at, okay, if I'm going to give them these kinds of goals, I have to be able to invest money, right? It's not an expense. It's an investment. If you think of things as an expense with staff, like I, I don't view staff as an expense unless they're on non-production side, right? Um, but I mean, that's kind of like a complex topic. I don't want to dive into, uh, but it's about giving the right tools to make things happen for that person. And so that's, that's something that I've seen and noticed when staff aren't hitting goals. And when the agent starts making excuses, it's because the agent knows deep down inside, I didn't either hold them accountable or I didn't give them the resources in order to help them be successful. You know what I mean? Spot on. It, it, look, whatever goals you have. They have to be achievable. And it, here's a great way, a great litmus test for you is, have you ever done it? Exactly. Right? You've never written that many policies in a month. If you've never made that many phone calls in a day, then, and, and it's your business, it's, it's your biggest asset or it will be one day. How in the world are you expecting somebody else to do that? Right? right. So if you've never done it before, probably a good idea to not require somebody else to do that. So that's just a great starting point. So I like, look, you know, because if you have done it, I mean, I remember when I was an owner, writing life insurance, hiring people, everything, and I was still writing the, the volume I was writing. Well, if I can do all that other work and still do that, well, then somebody that comes in that just focuses on that work, they should be able to do that, right? I've proven that that's achievable, at least from an activity perspective. Maybe their ability is not as good as yours. Maybe they can't close as well as you can, and you can coach them and, and teach them on that. But from an activity perspective, it has to be an achievable goal. So a great place to start if you're not sure is, have you done it before? So if you haven't, you know, maybe it's time to back off on that a little bit and make sure that it is something reasonable. And again, you gotta, you gotta be able to provide them the resources. They don't have to, you don't have to provide all the leads because we tell them up front, you know, look, you need to be able to bring some things to the table too. You got a personal network, you got Facebook, you got friends, family, you can go out and develop centers of influence. There's things that you can do to bring things to the table. It's not about, just me handing you all these leads every month. So, you know, it's, it's a two way street, but I think all those things have to be achievable. I think if you make it, if you think about it in those terms, when you start setting these goals for these people, um, then obviously it's, it's much more likely to happen. I love it. Yeah. So tell me, um, so I know you have Craig Wiggins coaching CWC. Tell me like we, so we went, went through hired um, before, after went through all the process of hiring. How can CWC help our agents, um, maximize results when you when you're hiring staff well we we do a lot of things with our members we we, we have a, a virtual platform that we use it has thousands of hours <laughs> i guess now maybe not thousands hundreds of hours of videos on it with all these different topics you know hiring sales service life insurance the videos are short you know two three four minutes long um very consumable the key thing about all of our content on our platform is it's taught primarily um, by my staff when it's intended to be watched by a staff. Right. So all the all the sales and service content is taught by people that are here. They're doing things at a high level, you know, a very high level. Some of them writing you know, over 200 a month. Um, and then I, I film all the owner content so they can they can 
become a member and they get all this content. It's 177 bucks a month for full access to it 24 seven has all of our documents, all the internal documents we use in the agency. They're all uploaded to the platform. So they get access to all of that stuff. In addition to all the live training that we do every month. So every Wednesday we have a class for staff. Every other Tuesday we have one for owners. We have specialized training on building centers of influence on, you know, hiring new people and getting them up to speed quickly on uh, developing remote employees. We do all these things all throughout the month, you know, to help. And then if someone wants one on one help, they can actually join a level that where they work directly with me. And we have a call every other week to work on things that are going on in their office, you know, kind of like this conversation we're having now, but taking a deep dive into what what we need to help them with and make sure they're making the right decisions and that type of thing. And then we do live events. We have workshops here in the agency for sales, for coaching, for leadership. We just we try to be that resource that is, you know, it's just missing. You know, I remember when I first started and you probably do, too. There wasn't a whole lot of there wasn't a lot of help. There wasn't a lot of support. Right. You maybe had a manager, maybe you had some agents in your market. that might tell you a little bit, but they wouldn't tell you too much because they scared you're going to do what they're doing, whatever. And it was hard to really get good information about what to do, how to compete, how to how to win when you're higher, how to how to make the right hires to begin with. Kind of like this the stuff we're talking about today. All these different things that people are struggling with. So several years ago, I just decided, you know what, I, I want to put all this together to help people. Because I remember what it was like, you know, not being able to sleep at night, wondering where things were going to go and what was going to happen and what my business was going to look like. And, and I've seen so many people fail simply because they didn't have good information. So yeah. we started doing this and, and it's, it's been great. We work with thousands of people all over the country and um, it's been very, very rewarding to say the least. That's awesome. I've, I've actually had quite a few agents, they'll message me and they'll, and they'll say things like, hey, that CWC thing, does it work? And I, I tell them about my experience. I said, you know, if your staff or yourself don't take advantage of it, even the placebo effect works. I think, I think ever since I had my, my producers, just having to be on the Wednesday call just gets them to think about training and needing to do better. I'm pretty sure I've already made more than $177 that month. So I think it's awesome. Um, Absolutely. But they need to take advantage of it. <laughs> you know, and look, man, People want to be trained. Yeah. Most agencies, they don't have any structure. They don't have they don't have the time. Some of them don't have the resources or frankly the knowledge to train on some of these things that we're talking about. Right. Your people want to be trained. If they're not being trained, you know, they're probably looking for something else. They, right. Because when you train, you know, that tells them there's other things down the road. They're going to get better. There's 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 a light at the end of the tunnel. There's more opportunity. Whatever you want to say. And if you look at the best companies in the world, you know, they train every day. You know, and, and I mean, just think about if you had a football team, you know, and you just show up to play a game every Saturday or Sunday and, and you never practice, you yeah. never look at any film, you never talk about anything, you just show up and, you know, you get your rear end handed to you and then and then show up again next Saturday and you want a different result. Well, that's what's happening when your people are talking to customers and talking to prospects every day. They're losing because they're not getting any training and you're just hoping that they get better over time. So yeah. when you drill down, you make it very specific and you give them that structure especially when they hear it from people that do what they do, not some other owner right. or some you know, motivational speaker or industry expert. When they hear it from Beth or Josephine or people in my office that have the same challenges, it resonates, it's relatable, and, and they buy into it. That's so awesome. So how do they find you and, and your program? My, my website is craigwigginscoaching.com. Um, and anybody's free to reach out to me directly. I get my cell phone out freely, regularly. It's, it's 256-520-6880. You can text me, you can call me. And again, you can go right to our website. There's plenty of places there you can contact us. And, and I'll be more than happy to help you and talk about whatever issues you're dealing with. I have a sincere, genuine desire to help people. You know, yes, we have a business, but there's a lot of times I help people that, you know, they're not even a member or, or they never even become a member. That's fine. You know, if, if I can make a difference and make a positive impact on somebody, um, you know, and help them, that, that's that's really my goal. And that's that's what we're trying to do. So they can reach me any way, any, any means possible. I'm, I'm all over Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever. Yeah. Um, if I can, I want to do it. That's awesome. And he, you're also in our insurance agent think tank group on Facebook. I see you replying to people and, and commenting. So definitely love having mega agents like you in our, in our, in our Facebook group and, and helping out. So thanks again. I really appreciate, I've even learned quite a few things and I've known you for a while. So I'm, this is a really good podcast. I actually liked it. Uh, well, 
I appreciate you, man. You run you, your group is one of the best on Facebook, if not the best. You, run, you do a good job of running it and, um, you know, keeping it on point and clean and, you know, not letting it get where it just gets out of hand. So you, you do. And I know it's tough because I have several groups, too. And being an admin and handling all that stuff, guys, if you don't do it, you've never done it. Right. There's a lot that goes on. You got to be the bad guy sometimes. But that's how you, you know, you create that same culture within that group like we're trying to create an agency. So. You know, props to you for that. I appreciate you letting me be a part of that and, and contributing and, and trying to help other folks. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Again, you can find this podcast at www.agentsthinktank.com.